Next, we'll take a look at the roles of interest groups. We wanna figure out all the different things that interest groups do to try and impact policymaking. Here we see another example of an interest group. This is Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Uh, they've got a bunch of people together. Obviously, they want to influence gun control policy. So this is an example of an interest group because none of these people are running for office. These are people that are trying to impact the policies that are being made. First of all, the interest groups function as a linkage institution. They link people to the government. They are connecting people to the government by allowing them to organize and they can they can advocate for their policies that they want. Like they can advocate for the government to make the policy changes that they would like to see. They provide people with like a different form of connecting to the government than the political parties do. Because, like we said before, this is about telling the government what you want it to do more than it's about telling the government who you think should be in charge. So people who don't really care much about party politics are more likely to join an interest group and really advocate for a particular policy change that they want to make. So this allows people... Uh, people like interest groups because you can you can participate in government and in politics, but only based on the issues that you care about. With a political party, you tend to be involved in all sorts of issues, but with an interest group, you can focus on just the thing that matters to you. The interest group's main goal is to influence policy making. They want to have some say in what policies get passed. And this is the main function of the interest group. Every single other thing that they're doing is secondary to this goal. So just like political parties, everything they do is about winning elections. Here, the interest group, everything they do is about trying to make the policy changes that they want to see in government. The interest groups want to control the policy. So they want to make sure that the policies they like are the policies that the government is enacting. They don't care who does it. Like they do not care if it's Democrat or Republican. They don't care if it's Trump or Biden. They just care that the changes they want to see are made by the government. They will suggest these policies to the government. They'll suggest policy solutions to congressmen, presidents, local governments, whatever. They may even write the policies themselves. They may even write the laws and like give it to a congressman to pass. But they want to control what the policy is more than they want to control who does the policy. Like They do not care about who does it. They just care about what happens. Interest groups also play a role in informing the public. They have to make sure that the people have the same opinions as they do about the policies. So they do a lot of advertising that's directly for us. You may see advertising about the policy changes that they want to see made. Like, for example, you might have seen advertising from something like the NRA, the National Rifle Association, or maybe PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. These are interest groups. They're trying to sway your opinion because you're going to have influence over the people who pass the policy. So they want to make sure that there's enough public support for their policy changes so that they can try to put pressure on the lawmakers to change the policy. Beyond informing the public, they also play a major role in informing the policymakers themselves. This is what we call lobbying. When they're trying to persuade or influence the decisions of the lawmakers, this is activity that we call lobbying. It's kind of the main thing we're going to focus on when we talk about what interest groups do. But we had said that they are the policy specialists, so they provide information to the policy generalists that are the lawmakers, the congressmen, the presidents, the local government officials. So they are sharing their expertise. They're making suggestions about policies that they want to see. And uh, they may even suggest effective ways to like for the lawmakers to talk about these policies or suggest strategies for passing these policies. But they're giving information to the policy makers. Just like political parties, they've got to raise funds. They have to operate from day to day. So they've got to raise money from their members and from people with that share their concerns. So they do a lot of fundraising. Um, 
they use the funds often to donate to political candidates. So they help to fund the campaigns of political candidates as well. Um, but if they want to do that, like we talked about in the money, uh, the money and campaign stuff, they have to form a PAC and they have to register with the government so that we can know which interest groups are influencing which candidates. Um, these, these interest group donations end up being a big source of influence over the policymakers. So the policymakers will often do what the interest groups want because they want to get that money for their campaigns and for their re-elections. So the interest groups, they, they have to raise money from uh, people that support them just like the political parties do. And then the interest groups are going to turn around and often spend that money on political parties. One of the ways that they link people to the government is, is interest groups provide a voice for the people. They allow individuals to advocate for the policy preferences that they want. Um, getting together in a group is a way that you can amplify your speech. So if you have you have a particular policy preference, you may be more effective by joining with a large group of people who share that policy preference and advocating to the government or to the public the changes that you want to see. Like we talked about, Interest groups uh, can represent you based on your beliefs better than political parties can if you have very strong policy preferences because political parties are going to represent you more based on where you live. Interest groups are also going to try to control the public opinion. They do a lot of advertising, like we said, to persuade the public, but they're going to try to control public opinion to make sure that they have a positive image. This is going to be important for groups when they advocate, like groups like the NRA, who may struggle with public image, uh, they tend to like have less success with lawmakers if the public doesn't support them. So uh, they do try a lot. Interest groups try to play a big role in controlling the public opinion and make sure that the people think about them as a positive force in politics. That's going to help them attract more members, get more support, and have a better opportunity to influence what policies get made. Finally, like the political party, the interest group has to mobilize people. So they're going to play a role in organizing people and putting them in position to effectively advocate for policy change. Um, they may do this by endorsing a candidate. If they endorse a candidate that they think will make the changes that they want, they're going to help to mobilize a large block of voters. They're helping to get people to act together. They may uh, try to get people to like rally in public. Like that's what we saw in the picture there. Moms demand action. They're having like a public march. So they're, they're trying to find ways to show support, to show the public how much support they have and to it like to attract more public support so that they can put pressure on the lawmakers to make the decisions that they want. All right, that is a lot that interest groups do. We've gone through several of the roles of interest groups. We want to remember always that everything the interest group is trying to do is all about their main goal of influencing policy. So now we're going to kind of step back and talk about where interest groups fit in in society, where we find them in the Constitution, how the public feels about them, and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs>